All right. Well, Denmark's taking your citizenship away for <laughs> predicting against Astralis, Goldberg. Welcome so I hope it's too. worth it, bro. Did you want to say Astralis is going to Worlds? Yeah, there's a lot. This is way, this is upside. This is some Freaky Friday stuff. If you guys don't remember, Goldberg was like the Astralis apologist when he joined our broadcast. So this yeah. is some character development on both sides. Uh, we'll see who comes out on top. Reminder, spot and groups on the line. Find out who can, uh, who can take it. <laughs> Who can make it there? They're both sitting pretty, pretty much regardless, but we'll see you can lock it in here. It's time for our first game of the day, Excel versus Stralis. Water grind. I always like to look at how many water bottles a player has next to a desk. I think it's it's a clear sign of commitment to hydration. I am not com oh, nope, never mind. I got water bottle here. Bottle. Yep. Bro, I can hook you up. Gotta try and, you gotta try and keep up. We what kindly ask you not sign? to play Yumi. The oh, not crowd. to play it. So when I was at the cash desk, I thought it said not to pick it. Not to play. Not I mean, to it's the same, same, same thing. thing. It's the same thing. Okay, as much as the audience is excited about Yumi, I'm excited about a different animal, and it's Azir, the bird in the mid lane. Why the hell are you excited about Azir? No, mostly, okay, so let me correct what I'm saying here, because I did say I was excited about Azir coming back because he did things, but now I'm over it. It took five games, I'm bored again. Um, that said, Leader played Azir yesterday, which is, again, speaking of character development, wow, what a weird he character banded. arc. They banded. banded this time, and I, thought I was going to say, I think but that makes sense, because Abba is the guy who you would assume wants to play Azir every time. Despite weirdly picking Nico yesterday, but after that loss, they're adjusting. Does mean they get Milio, but is it going to work out? Because it means it's giving up the Zaya that did so much work for them. Is it worth to give over a Filios Milio for that Azir ban? Hmm. We're going to find out. There's a Zaya Maokai taken away. Sai, um, Sai. Uh, Vi and Sejuani are already down, so obviously Strong and Shunger. They can just go uh, a nice, easy Aphelios here, XL. I think I'd be surprised if they go 4-5. Tristana is such a broken mid laner right now on the patch. The thing is with Tristana, oftentimes you'll see Tristana mid with Kai'Sa AD, Varus AD, or Ziggs, because they're all basically ability power. So it uh, really helps your damage share out. So I'm wondering if they are going to go Aphelios here. Wouldn't make as much sense. Okay. Ooh. All right. That's, Amumu. that's Peach on the Amumu. 100% Amumu jungle at this point with the Melio locked in alongside of it, short of some really crazy cooking here. It's the Yordle comp. Weirdly, not the first Amumu that we've seen this season. The leader, is he thinking about Silas? He's like, guys, I can tell him, like, <laughs> it's going to suck in lane, but trust me, I can take that ult and I'll one shot all of them. The game will literally be unplayable Ooh, no, for he's the thinking first about 10 Akali. minutes. Wow. I knew he was cooking I, up some assassin. I'm going to be honest, I think Static Shivakali is trash. I knew it. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I swear, I swear. Bro, I know Leader Skulls, he's like, dude, that Amumu. If Leader oh is ever God. a fugitive from justice, you just put a poster of Alistar or a Mumu somewhere, and he will appear like with a his sight or like a you know, He's he, like, bro, he has to do it. it. But then the coach is like, dude, you're playing Silas and Tristana. He's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I'll think, go think, down about, think, about think about the Amumu. Think about the ult. Like, he'll R flash, but then I'll R flash even harder. Yep. Uh, so he wants <laughs> damage. They, uh, they dropped AD, so they're probably going to lose Draven and Aphelios here. Yeah, uh, interesting. XL. I would say Tristana bots could work, but you know. Yeah, Tristana bot not something we've seen. I like Tristana mid in general. I like the idea of giving Excel priority. Now, again, reminder that Excel on their streak last week was pretty much all about late game scaling. It was very consistently uh, Zaya plus Zier plus Maokai. You'll notice the Zaya and the Maokai on the side of Astralis this time around. These are picks that have been very good in Europe. But I like that Excel are branching out a little bit strategically. We'll see if it uh, works for them here. And I'm curious to see where Astralis go with the rest of this draft. I like that they're saving potential last pick here for Finn. You would assume that they'll go support on four since they already have just about all the information they need. I would love a Renekton here for Finn. I feel like it's such an Astralis comp, isn't it? Maokai, Silas, Renekton, just, just full beefy sense. Beefy boys, full beefy just boys, fighting. Just destroy yeah. everyone in fights. Uh, they've taken away Nautilus Rakan. I mean, they have three support bands. Yumi's down as well, and they have Melio, which is the strongest support in the game. So if they... You know, if they don't get ahead in bot, that's going to be a bit questionable for uh, for XL because that's such a, such a powerful bot lane yeah. uh, already. And Aphelios is open, right? They banned away well, Draven and Lucian, so I think they really have an easy access to a strong bot side there. So there's Renekton, Renekton. I okay. think Astralis are happy with this one. Yeah, so instead of prioritizing a counter pick, they prioritize the strong blind here. That's the Aphelios plus Milio combo that you talked about. Now Astralis, uh, more worried about the early game, it would seem, which throws me a bit off guard. But maybe there's something happening in scrims we're not ready for. Yeah, I wonder what support they're going to go as well into, into this Milio. Things like Alistar is something I would think about. You need an engage support and Nautilus Rakan are down. 
Uh, Rel could be something that's actually Rel's disabled. I always see Rel in the LTL and LCK. I'm like, oh, Rel. No, they can't pick it. Uh, but yeah, they're going to round on top lane here. Odoamne could go for something like a Gragas, a Scion. Uh, and I think when you're playing double AD carry, you really want the Scion. <laughs> I just mean, some front line. Yeah. I don't mind the Scion. Orn? Nah, against against Scion, you don't want to play Orn, do you? Something tanky that could build Mandate. Yeah. Maybe, just so you have a little bit of magic damage. Nope, Scion Ooh, it is. it's a Pike Slam. Woo! It's a, Woo! It's a Jung Hoon special. Oh! We got the one yes! trick out here. We got Leader Silas. We got yes! the Jung Hoon Pike. We got Finn on Rennington. And this is so good because I was so nervous after last week that every single team was just going to do scaling this week. And I am glad that Astralis are mixing up. And respect to Excel for sticking to scaling. That's what won for them in week yeah. two. But Astralis, now we have two compositions with very different priorities, different win conditions. Oh, yeah. uh, don't skirmish Astralis in the early game, they are better. Yeah, XL have a really heavy front to back, double AD carry, frontline and enchanter. It's really simple. Astralis just have a massive skirmish heavy, everyone can flank kind of comp. But it's going to be funny this game because I wonder if Leader is going to take Peaches and Mumu flash ult, and then the Melee is just going to cleanse everyone out That's of it. And Leader's like, say, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> I, I feel like many people do that Melio uh, is strong for a number of reasons, but the all, for the same reason that it's strong in something like Nico, it just feels like can mitigate so much of that threat. And when you already have a Scion on the front line and your only option are these big flanks with these high, like high damage, high CC moments, yeah. Melio shuts that down, man. So they gotta, they gotta navigate away from this Pike. They gotta be really careful because Scion, Melio, they wanna scale. Pike and Rennington, oh boy, they're gonna fight those neutrals, baby. Oh. There it is. <laughs> you know, honestly, respect, man. I feel you. <laughs> Sunday, no work. Let's get into it. Game one, groups on the line, Excel versus Stralis. And if you're in the studio, you can hear Young Hoon talking already, making calls, calling shots. This is the pike. We saw it in spring as well. Shout out to the production team who was quick to give me that information. It lost versus SK. They're all standing in this bush, and all I can hear is Astralis laughing. They're anticipating a level one, I guess? Yeah, but look how many walls they've put down already, XL. They're scared of some kind of late invade towards the bot side. Just making sure everyone's safe. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be a pretty calm start. No level ones. Peach has got Conqueror on the Amumu. Is he going to walk in and take Raptors? No, he's just going to put a ward down. No base for Sweeper. And we saw Razork on the Amumu, the amount of damage he can do. Uh, yeah. This is their only AP threat, so I wonder if he's going to go some kind of Demonic Embrace build. It feels like he probably has to. And I will say that I'm actually like, Amumu's kind of a very, he's a, not kind of, Amumu's a very simple champion. But ever since they gave him the double Qs, he feels like a real champion and not just like baby's first champion. Yeah. You know, there's actually some decision making uh, dude, uh, that has one, to happen there. <laughs> While you're talking, one, one, three just walked into their Raptors. Yeah. Mine now. <laughs> Walked up, queued. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? He's going to go to red afterwards as well, isn't he? Doesn't have a ward for the uh, for the Raptors brush, but he knows that uh, Peach is topside and his top lane is Rennington versus Scion. So he doesn't really care about playing topside. He just wants to make sure this range support of Melio can't push and get a lane lead. They just want to unlock Jong Hoon towards mid. So uh, this is go. great. They can play Halo so aggressive. Blades, Pike level one, one, two. Oh, doesn't get the third auto. That's a bit awkward. If you've ever played against this champion, he does this exact thing level one every single game. Uh, it's very effective. Oh and God. you can just see that he's getting sums. Bro, dude, Maokai's on Crux. They're going to dive bot. We'll see if Peach can get here in time. Exile's probably going to spot it out with their ward on Melio. Can they steal it away? Astralis, they don't have Smite on 113, so it's kind of awkward. He wants to finish these Crux, Wait, get level 3. He has mid prio. Yeah, he's getting collapsed on. He has no W, but yeah, he's just going to get forced out. Good that they spotted that. And they thought about it because 113 getting level 3 there and they pushed the wave. That's a dive, but he'll already use down there. Peach is going to collect up his Krux. Yep. And I think 113 can happily just clear bot the top now if he wants and gets a small camp lead. Happy to have that small advantage. Happy to have bot side priority as you highlighted. If, if Pike doesn't get the advantage at level 1, you can lose lane prior very quickly. And as soon as those creeps are crashing, it's pretty hard to find those angles. It's, Leader feeling a little bit more comfortable now that he ticks over to leader? level three. Leader, Never leader, mind, leader, he's feeding. Leader, leader. Yeah, okay. Not. He does manage to lift. But oh, now Yonhu is on the way. Big bait, big brain. Abadage now in trouble. Pulled back. Oh, the combo's almost perfect. Oh, he hits him out of the sky. Just steps him through the air. What? 
just takes Abedaga out. Drops the ignite as well. Leader misses the E. Gets an assist though. Damn. Man, that was that was a bait. We, we even we got baited. Was it a bait though? Um, I'll say convincing performance. Oscar to you know, it's like Leonardo DiCaprio in that scene where he broke the glass on his hand. Like, we were really believing it. That's what I will say. <laughs> Didn't he actually like do damage to his hand? In yeah, that scene? he actually did. <laughs> Shout out to Leonardo DiCaprio and Leader. You know. Yeah. Again, he flashed. He really did flash. He really burned flash to wow. convince. This is this is either the a true story or the greatest cope of all time. And no flash on Abadaga now. So I mean, this is just going to be rinse and repeat, really, isn't it? They're just going to get Pike towards mid. Yeah. One, three is going to finish his top cams, hover around bot, make sure Pike can get to mid. And, and as, long as, gonna, yeah, as, long, as long as they don't get dove on the bottom side of the map for Astralis, they're sitting pretty. Do they dive on this bot wave? They've got Darn the, the uh, poke. Oh god, Milio is so yeah. oppressive with that passive early, but Finn, not content with just having go. a wet noodle fight. Look at bot. Cobb is completely... Does he safe this way? Oh, that's Riss is so safe hard. That way. There's four members. There's no way. Jongu trying to body block. He ease back through that psycho. The flash out from Patrick is clean to deny it. So far, clean dive. Leader now trying to follow up. Jongu does no chance to go invisible. No chance to heal. Peach coming in clutch. Leader now potentially get locked up. I don't think they can oh, re-dive. Wow. They don't have enough health. Yes, jumped on the way is 1-1-3. One, one, Keep your eye on that. Sapling not going to be enough. Excel. The, slow. the dive. At the end of the day, they are going to get one back on the side of Astral. It's not perfectly clean, but an excellent start from the side of Excel. Oh, poor Mumu dies for the dive, but it's so worth it. Look at those creeps. Leader's going to pick up a lot of them, but two plates gone. They didn't get one of those plates in terms of gold there, Excel, but the dive was clean. You can see the gold lead on the Aphelios over the Zaya now. Both summoners burned by Patrick. We'll see if Astralis can look to punish that, but that was a massive stacking wave. We'll see that soon, but you can see Leader here. Goes really aggressive onto Abadaga. Here he wants to back away, but his Q's up and he wants that cannon. He gets the cannon, but he loses his flash for it. Luckily for him, 113 and Jonghoon are on the way. And this is where we'll see the Pike manage to pick up the kill through the air. Flash W from 113. The, the hook misses. Actually, does hit. Look but at it that. E. The... And here's the thing. Boom! They weren't even remotely next to each other. <laughs> they weren't even close. They're flying through Where's the air. VAR? That didn't even hit him. <laughs> Man just took a dive. Just stabbed the air underneath him. Managed to hit him. Maybe he stabbed upwards. Yeah, and here's the play. Obviously, easy to set up the kill with the purple gun. Uh, they get a little sloppy here towards the end, taking a lot of tower shots, but 1-1-3's timing manages to turn it back for Astralis. At least they get something. But as you highlighted, as nice as it is to have that kill on a Mumu, uh, the real winner in this play is Patrick, who is going to hold this wave forever because if Kabi walks up, he loses every yeah. single trade. They're stacking another wave, so what you'll see happen here is I think Peach is going to move down, maybe look for another dive on the walk side. Meanwhile, on the top side of the map, Oduwamne trying to get away from Finn so he can potentially ult to safety would be my assumption on the play. Does have the farm alarm to return to lane, but he is in a bit of a tough position now. Demolish gonna proc, gonna come through, so a plate at least over to Finn. Nice hook coming in from Jonghoon, but again, follow-up here is really tough. Jonghoon only level three, Kabi so far behind in terms of gold. Oh, pull back, leader. leader, getting level six first. Can he knock him back? Between the goal posts! Oh, he's scoring! That's the leader, Silas, right there, baby. Puts the Abadage behind, loses his flash, yeah, but gets the solo kill. Look at this bot wave, it's massive. Can Astralis catch it? Looks like they're fine for now. Excel maybe want to do something on that bot wave, but their mid laner's down. They don't have information on the Maokai. That's a massive solo kill. You know, you're playing Silas and Strasana. That's such a horrible matchup in the early stages, but leader managing to find yeah. a little bit of pressure on that lane phase. Eight on a gold lead now. Very big, especially because Tristana's only going to be coming back with a Noon Quiver. We'll help with the CS, we'll help with the pressure, but the trades still going to be going in favor of Leader as Jonghoon. Still poking, still testing here, but you can see it's good for Astralis that mid lane is going as well as it is for Leader because it's going even better for Excel on the bottom side of the map. Mm -hmm. It's kind of all eyes on Patrick in this one, something Excel are very used to saying. Probably against the cannon there. In the they're just trying to play out this lane phase to deny me as many creeps as possible. Herald's up in 30 seconds. Excel probably want to look to swap up there. Although Amelie's having a tough time, and so is Abadaga. Abadaga just hit level 6. Leader's halfway through level 7. And he's got a big wave to catch there. Oh god, Abadaga. Locked up. Knockback comes through. Input try or just jumps. Doesn't even need to buffer. Leader doesn't quite have the follow-up, but that massive chunk means it's going to be that much harder for him to stick around. Kabe. Not going to get hit by the moonshot there. Patrick and Limit can be able to push this wave in pretty easily. Yeah, should be able to. 1-3 is moving down here to see if they can collapse. But we're going to take a look at this replay on the solo kill. So Leader dashes forwards on the creep, stops Abadaga's jump Ooh. midway through, pulls him back down from the sky. <laughs> Doesn't land the Q2, but manages to get enough autos weaved in that the ultimate from the Shazana uh, takeaway gets the kill. Bam. I kind of was hoping we were going to get the ragdoll physics and she was going to get shot back there, but... 
like flying. Yeah, oh, flying. Oh, that would be <laughs> sweet. <laughs> Next up, really want to dive bolt. Okay, Peach Peach versus this Yongu. is easy. Just one shot him. Okay, holds on to the ultimate. Maybe he doesn't have the damage. In his, he doesn't think he has the damage, but he has no That's flash fair. for like 10 seconds. Here comes uh, 113. Leader has mid push as well. Dragon's not up for two minutes. Herald's still up. Does uh, Astralis just commit to a full swap here and say, you know what, top's winning, let's play for Herald and let's get this Sai out of lane phase. That could be something they look into because that'll shake the whole map up, but Copy doesn't want to lose this wave. And as he stays, XL's going to back away first, see if Jonghoon can stop their bases, but Leader is just trading like a madman. Ooh, just continuing to get aggressive. Misses on the chains and Abadage trying to extend the trade. Did reset the rocket jump as well as he dives in there. Finn trying to push his advantage on the top side of the map by getting a little bit of vision down, potentially committing to taking away the blue. I can't imagine, it just doesn't have the time. And this is one of the reasons I think Scion is so annoying and so good, is because, like, if you leave him alone, even when you're 600, 700 gold ahead in lane, he just instantly deletes the wave and pushes in. Like, what an incredibly frustrating champion to play against. It is, he can just kind of, I mean, Baus likes the proxy for a reason, right? He just yeah. wants to ignore you and farm these creeps. Leader has TP. Astralis want to fight this Herald 100%. They're Astralis. So where's the Markai ult? Is going to come in? Are they going to go for this? Cobb is quite far away, but they're Limit level for a six fight. as well. Patrick, Pins. great guns. I don't think this is a good yeah, angle this whatsoever. Is this is hard, but they're going to go Here XL first. Scion, root to stop any potential fall. 113 now going back to try to get away. Abadagi off to the side. 113 surely set to fall here. Leader on the backside, the stolen Amumu ult. The whole reason the Silas came through, but there's no angle. There's no setup. XL taking the objective, taking the kill, walking away unscathed. Astralis a little bit late. You can see they had to catch the bolt wave, so Kobe was a bit too far away. And he's down in XP, not even got that level 6 yet. He should get it just now off that creep, but Patrick's almost level 7. And 113 a little bit caught out. Doesn't have the phase rush. I think if you had phase rush, you could probably get out there, but no flash means he's as good as dead. Once the chances he comes through, Leader has the ulti. Stop Ooh, the jump another again. hook. Perfect follow up with the Amumu ult immediately. Can he get another solo kill? Leader coming through. Does not quite have the damage? Maybe. The follow up from Mabadagi! Whoa! The cannon. Blinking health bars. He got the cannon. Leader leveling up. Two level advantage. That's close. Leader could. He's maxing W leader, so yep. is there an E flash W angle here for him? It's very, very risky, but. Abadaga's scared of it. Level 9 to level 7. Abadaga should level up on this next minion. How? But leader really wants leader to. want to get. Oh, he can't now, the level up's too much. Just back off. Leader, though, again, 20 CS up. Much more than you ever anticipated when you locked in this champion against Tristana. So very good thus far. It's only going to get more difficult though as Tristana manages to complete a first item. Not sure how close Abadaga is at this exact moment in time. He's being a little bit greedy here, Abadaga. I think he's waiting out some gold for his first item. Doesn't want to base and pick up small components. Going to get the wave. Leader's going to back off. So is Abe. Drake's up. And Astralis already have the first one yet to see what the soul will be. Cobb is coming out of base. Yonghoon's level 6, gonna put some wards down in the enemy jungle, take away some of these pings perhaps, and then look for a Drake start. And Jonghoon, level 6 now, opens up so many opportunities. Astralis already about a thousand ahead in gold because of top lane and mid lane. Both Finn and Leader doing very well thus far. Grabbing the second Drake as well, moving closer to Drake stacking. Not gonna have a Chemtech soul, is gonna feel good, most certainly. Yeah. I think it's going to be Cloud. Hextic. Ooh. I feel like you could okay. All right. call me out for cheating there, because it kind of showed no, up for no, a second. No, no, the words were coming out of your I'm mouth I'm always before. a Hextech enjoyer. I feel like when Hextech souls in the game, it's just fun to watch. The portals, yep. love the tech. Agree. Leader? It's fine. Leader. Oh, he's Never stops. He's he dead, just keeps going he in. He kills him. He kills him. Hit him. God, and again, we just rinse and repeat. Nice. High class stuff, there it is. Claps in the back from the Astralis support staff. Rightfully so. Harold's coming through, Jong Hoon. Jong -hoon bit of trouble. Locked off to the side. Peach not gonna follow up with the second charge there. Charge goes in, more money in the back pocket of Peach. Yeah. Good to have. But for XL, it feels like they need to leverage their power point on the bottom side of the more uh, of the map more because mid lane is getting out of hand very fast. Patrick was the strongest member relative to his lane opponent until leader got these back to back kills and now. He's going to be everybody's problem, not just Abadage's problem. Four plates in mid without a Herald in Silas versus yes, Tristana. Silas. This is supposed to be the other way around, really. This is a really horrible situation to be in 4XL. And Patrick didn't get any of the goals from that Herald. It all went to Peach. So he's got his demonic embrace. We'll see how much he can do in fights. Still 1,000 gold up is Patrick. He's going to get towards his first mythic. And reminder, of course, We'll hold that thought as we get into the replay here. He stops his jump again. Abadag is not buffering it properly. He's kind of W'ing as the E comes out. He needs to wait for the E and then W as the CC is about to hit, not just before. Yeah. And then there comes the 
Buster shot? It, the buster shot? Buster shot, yeah. It feels unpracticed. And he's, you know, he's laughing. He's kind of trying to make the most of it. I'm not going to make too many assumptions about facial expressions there, but at least he doesn't look super tilted because that is something you have to be able to come back from. You yes, have to be able to focus on in the game. It's the huff and the lean back. That's the, the I'm tilted. <sighs> the, oh, my God. Yeah. How do I make? Finn, desperate to fight. He just wants Odawamne to fight him. Odawamne is not interested. <laughs> Finn is the drunk guy at the bar. Odawamne is like, nah, man, that's that's not me. Please. No, violence doesn't solve problems. No. Leave me alone. I'm good, man. I'm not trying to fight. I'm just here to farm. No, I get it. You took karate. That's cool. I don't I don't need to see. Let me show you what I've learned. That's <laughs> running away. <laughs> Back away. Look at my legs. I go. <laughs> Leader's got so much wave clear, hasn't he? He just one-shots the wave. I mean, he's just so far ahead. That tower's dead. He's First tower into the silence. Man. He's two levels up on Abadaga. Tower's <laughs> gone. And this is the struggle, I think, for Excel is that, um, you know, a lot of your composition relies on just waiting and scaling, but now that mid lane tier one is down, again, Leader has a lot more freedom to do whatever he wants across the map. And the side lanes don't look great for Abadagi right now. Because Finn is also no slouch. He doesn't have old prowlers or anything, so Trishana should be able to get away, but... Mm, it's not uh, something you can push out, is it? Yeah. You need to salvage his bot side a little bit here, Astralis. You can see them. A lot of vision on the bot side jungle of Exile, and the leader with that mid tower can move down so easily. So 113 is behind them. Their tower is very low as well. Herald's up in 45 seconds. Exile, do you abandon this and just put your bot lane mid and try to play the rest of the map and drop this tower, or do you try and salvage this and maybe bring Abadaga down here? He has the TP so he can match leader, but I think their 4v4 is really hard losing at the moment. It's, it, it's. I mean, again, it's level 11 Silas. He takes an Amumu wall, which again was part of the reason why he locked this champion in. I just didn't expect it to be this one-sided. Peach is going to be in trouble here in a second. Oh. Leader gets aggressive. One, one, three is there. Perfectly laid trap, and now Peach is absolutely done. So Limit going to try to save the day. A big heal now what? coming in. The sapling over the wall. He's alive, I think. The body block. Patrick waiting over the wall. Leader overextending. This is it going to be a big shield to Leader? Oh no! The oh, Amumu lives. Throws it all away. Amumu does have. Legends. They come in and save him, don't they? Finn wants a little bit of action. Looking at Abadaga here, who's been struggling this game. Ult comes out, trying to get something back. Abadaga can just knock him backwards. The double dash forward, the flash over the wall. Finn not going to flash to follow. That was a very weird sequence of play. Harold going over to the side of Excel. Shutdown going over as well to Patrick. Just a, a nice bag of gold gifted over to their team. I was here when Amumu had friends. The day has come. So Peach, all his lonesome runs into River. He actually tanks a hell of a lot of damage, doesn't he? A full combo from a level 11 Silas, and the ult taken away, and the Maokai combo. With the Everfrost, full chain CC, just standing there. So what comes out from Limit? The Cozy Campfire heal, the Damn. shield initially, knockback, ult, shield again. Still has the summoner heal, I think. The or did he use that too? The Flamigo saving a Moo Moo. Oh my god. Every lore nerd the is having a great time. And then Peach goes back in and stuns him. Gets the flash, gets out. The Flamigos. And he's wearing, he's using like the Flame Amumu skin as well. I, it's perfect. Infernal Amumu. It, it's like they planned it. It is. It's all scripted. The LEC is scripted. No, don't tell. That's the secret. Uh, it's not scripted. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> what did it say on the script today? I forgot. Uh, it said, let's get a standing check. Standing check, reminder that both these teams, either one wins. They're sitting pretty that they've managed to lock for groups. They're not horribly positioned if they don't win, but it would be good to lock this in on day two. You don't want to be in a situation where you're preying on a tiebreaker. And while moments ago we might have said that this was Astralis' opportunity for an easy victory lap on the back of Leader's mid lane performance, uh, he just gave a lot of gold to the worst person to give gold to on the side of himself. So could definitely shift back in their favor. That second Herald not going to be able to break mid as Astralis trying to force another play. Abadagi getting weird with it. I don't think this is going to work out, but ooh, it does ooh. manage to make it out of safety. But multiple members have now been rooted up. Leader now looking for the fall. Leader looking for the setup. Patrick over the wall. Instantly swapping over to perfect guns for an AoE team fight. Leader is once again locked down. Finn trying to recover the play, but this time around, Abadaga gets the buffer right. Finn slowly getting cut down. Doesn't have enough healing. Kabi trying to pull the feathers back, but at the end of the day, it is Excel in the fight. They are so consistently getting more. And this will be the day you almost caught Captain Abadage. Double jump upwards, reversal, backflip over the bot side wall. That's what I'm gonna call it. You need to see that replay. That's Tony Hawk's pro skater. That was Tony Hawk pro skater. He's Man, he was out. all over the place. Manages to just kite them out. Gets Finn flash as well. Leader. Yeah. This Silas in lane phase, good. A lot of solo kills out of this lane phase, despite a 2k gold lead. Yep. He's just getting murdered by the Ophelios, really, isn't he? Bot tower is gone. Drake is gone. They've stopped the soul point for Astralis, and now I think they're sitting pretty. The AD carry of Abadaga is recovering slowly, but 
So Abadaga actually jumps up here because you'll see on the minimap there's a ward behind him on the left and he gets TP on behind from leader. So his only direction is up, gets the reset on the bomb, then yep. he jumps up again. And then you'll see the roots come out from the Maokai ult and the Everfrost, but they still want Abadaga. So here comes Finn. And as leader dies off to the side, Finn flashes over the wall, dashes, then he jumps back over this wall. Ooh. And uh, yeah, doing his best Talon cosplay on Tristana, and they pick up two kills. And when we talked about the compositions, we talked about front to back for Excel. And while that was not front to back, you can see a lot of what their composition does, and it locks leader down and does not let him do anything. He had melee ultimate he was unable to use, I believe, and none of the rest of Astralis could get in because there was so much. I mean, they just control space so well on the side of Excel. I don't know how they navigate these fights. Mm. It's certainly not by sending in their solo laners one at a time. I think Amumu is just surprisingly tanky, isn't he? I feel like Leader is getting combos onto this Amumu when Peach is just sticking to him, but there's no real damage coming out. He's got the Radiant Virtue now as Peach. And as they walk in towards this top side, Estrada is running away from this Amumu. Level 11 now, providing so much frontline. This, this Sion and Amumu is such a powerful frontline that if Leader starts hitting onto them or, and Finn does the same well, thing, they're just going to get destroyed in the front to back. They need to find a way to get onto the carries. And while Draft isn't going to be everything in a game like this, as Finn does instantly break the shield there, that's a positive little exchange. Oops, as well. Is he going to stick to this? He's got E really... up in one for a bit of armor shred. I don't think you can go for the dive here. Just going to be forced to back away there. Cooldown too low on that Scion shield, coming in clutch. But Milio was what Excel got with their first pick. It was traded for Maokai and Zaya. And right now, it really looks like Excel got the better deal. Milio also, doing so much work in this game. Yeah, it's also the Draven Lucian ban giving them Aphelios too. It stings, doesn't it? Because Aphelios Milio is so powerful. I think of Milio anything is kind of powerful, but Aphelios still one of the strongest on this patch. No nerfs just yet onto him. And now Excel moving towards his top side. Astralis really wants to play for this next Dragon in three minutes and get their soul. But of course, Excel have denied that. It's going to be about eight minutes before they can force it. Excel, are they thinking about a Baron? Or do Omni doesn't have TP? Just getting some vision instead. I mean, you've got... A Mumu to tank it or Scion to tank it, you've got double 80 carries. You can kill that objective very quickly if you've got good guns for Aphelios. Green gun fading away means that it would take a lot more time, so Excel. It's got a lot of red white ammo though. It's gonna get purple next. Maybe just trying to bait this one out for now, doing what they can with mid priority, just to make sure that they've got enough vision control so that they can safely recall, give Patrick the item to buy his Kraken, or the time rather to buy his Kraken. Peach is. Uh... He was being a bit greedy there on the vision. You can play human ward as a jungler. Oftentimes, after the first 15, 20 minutes of the game, all your carries take your camps and your job is just to be a human ward as a jungler, spotting out objectives in there. Just checking where Astralis is. I think he's going to keep on doing that as Abadaga catches these top waves. Two items onto Patrick now. Nazaya still lacking behind on the Navori. Yep, needs a bit more time. Uh, woo. And I think from here on out, we're kind of just waiting to see what Astralis can do to shift this game back into their favor. Two Drakes to their name may help them play for a soul. But once you get out of the laning phase, I, I get less excited about the pike if you don't have a lead. Yeah, you know, this is a champion that he can't... If he's a fed, he can do a lot by himself. If he's not, then you're pretty reliant on everybody else. But most everyone else on his team just needs to be catching waves right now. So it's a it's a tricky position for Jung Hoon. Yeah, despite the gold difference, Excel definitely in control. Finn's just playing the side lane right now. He's got that black cleaver, should win out against Otto Amne, but you can see Excel were thinking about a Baron start there. The ideal situation for them is baiting out the Renekton TP if Otto Amne has one move. It's a bit of an awkward situation because Otto Amne's just the tanking train all this blows. damage. And uh, Scion, sort of this immovable object here. Heals back up, courtesy of the Jack Show as well. Dragon in 50 seconds. Astralis getting in a little bit of vision on this top side as the support of XL limit needs to base. Has his flashback up, refreshing the wards, and this dragon fight will happen soon. Base coming in from 113. He's got the Radiant Virtue as well, so he's matching the Amumu items quite nicely. Yep. And now I think we'll start to see the push forwards from Astralis. The base from Zaya coming in, the Navori quick blades, and he had picked up by Expects from Kobe. And then. All hell will ensue on this next dragon because XL have to deny it. Yeah. There is a world where they try to rush a Baron, but I don't think that's what they want to look for with this topside we're vision in favor of Astralis. There's no real sneak option. We're also in a situation where there's only blue trinkets and sweepers. There's not a ton of vision passing control wards in inventory, but Peach going to kick a fight off just trying to burn through the jungle. Keep your eyes on Leader though, if you can find an angle to the back line for now, though Patrick already tearing through. Leader needs a perfect ultimate if they want to turn this play, because that free pick guarantees the dragon for Excel. 
Chonghoon can't really do anything in this fight. He's off to the side. He hooks limits, but that's about all he can do. The front to back is so powerful from XL. He's happy to just dash in straight away there, Peach, and just lock one target down for XL. Fishes for the steal does not come through. The Second dragon for the side of XL, double Hextech. Astralis at a man disadvantage, still posturing around the mid lane. Getting this wave in his XL. Leader's looking for a flank, but they've spotted him. They might collapse on top of him, but Jonghoon's here to escort him out. How far do they want to chase this XL? They know he's here somewhere. Okay, not going to spot him there. Does he TP out? Excellent work, Observers, with the vision highlight. He's just playing Ooh. on the edge here, trying not to get spotted. Probably starting to recall right now. No. Oh, they spotted him for a frame there. Is he walking what is down he? to execute? I feel I like he could have recalled. trying to hide out of vision, but he's not hiding out of vision. Not out of vision. They're going to be on the way. Spotted. Maybe they can take down Odawamne. It's going to take a lot of time to burn through the silo. Maybe they can get something done. The stolen Amumu ultimate. Not even getting a chance to use it on multiple members. Walking back under the tower and once again cut down. But Astralis, uh -huh. they see their window of opportunity. The so reversal. many members the reversal. made it to come down to the objective. <laughs> Once again, leader. There's no way. Is he a mastermind or a feeder? It's hard to say, but right now he's There's a mastermind. No 2K is getting lower. They get the Baron. They all oh shot my as well. God! They just. He just was that. Was that planned? Was it? No, that, that I, definitely I, I, wasn't planned. I, I, yeah, I refuse uh -uh. to believe that was planned, leader. Uh -uh. No, I'm calling bluff on that one. They're gonna get a mid tower from that. Maybe they get a tier two. Cop is there, but he's got no flash. But Excel, they have the green gun on Patrick and a Tristana. They can push down for a second one. So, leader and two towers for a Baron. That's what I call macro right there. Astralis pulling out Jong Hoon. The switcheroo. Needs to be careful here. Okay. Um. So in EU, wow. this is how we do our barons. Uh huh. You know? The old swippy swappy. Yeah. It's like when they send four people bottom to kill your mid laner. Yep. Who was trying to flank and thought Again. he was out of vision. Or. Leonardo DiCaprio. Hard to say. Yeah. Again, give that man two Oscars. Yes. Pushing mid here. Does Kobe have a wave? I think he does. Is that a mid tier too? Oh my god, so Astralis actually didn't recall on the Zaya yet, so Kobe must be sitting on a handful of gold, but they obviously knew XL needed to recall. Managed to get a tower back, so that helps the okay. overall play itself. The thing is, Kobe wants the base, he's low on mana, but leaders just come out of base after having sacrificed himself to the gods of Baron. Yep. And he wants to push for this bot tier too, but he doesn't have a Baron buff, so it's hard to play on this side lane, so Kobe's just gonna take that base. And while Leader has both been incredibly... Uh, hmm. he's, he's been leader. This game, He's been the double-edged sword this game, let's say. Is it a uh, verb now, to leader? He's been leadering. <laughs> Do you want to like, make it a verb? That I can't... Yeah. He, is gets, that, he is, gets solo kills, then he just gets one shot in fights, and then he dies, fights. and they get barons. And leadering. Yeah, he's leadering. He's leadering. Um, no it still feels like Excel should be in total control of this game, correct? Um, well, when the Baron wears off, they definitely will be, but the pushing lanes will be in favor of Astralis. What you'll see happen here is the leader's going to push top all the way to tier 2. Odomini's going to have to base and match it. The question is, can Astralis get that top tower, or does Excel want to fight it? After that play happens, Excel will probably be back in the driver's seat, but for now, a lot of pressure coming out from the side of Astralis as Cobb is coming out of base. He's going to start pushing right. these mid waves the rest of his team, and Excel will match this top play. One minute, 50 seconds, counting down. Limit coming into the area. Jong Hoon just trying to hide in the darkness as best he can. A lot of good vision in mid lane. We'll spot out Patrick. Yeah. Bot tier two is NX focus, so they threaten the top tower. Then they move from top to bot. And with the Baron buffs on the on the Renekton level 16, they should pick this up unless Abadaga feels very confident to walk up. No team behind him. So they get a tier two. And a tier two mid. And continuing to hold on to a gold lead here is Astralis. Again, we talk, we've talk we talked so much about scaling, but it's still on XL to make sure that they can, uh, you know, patch up the holes in what does feel to be a pretty leaky ship at this stage of the game. They've made it <laughs> overcommitted a few times. Leaky ship. I mean, it's a clear game plan, you yeah. know? Feels like at this stage for XL. Yeah, I'm looking at leader's items. Everfrost, Banshee, Zonias, you know, there's a lot of survivability there. I'm not sure how much damage he's going to do, though. And Let's I think see that's, what he can cook up. Yeah, more pressure on Nakabe to really show up in these fights. Two and a half items. Once he finishes Lord Dominix, he will be very powerful. Yeah, Baron up in uh, 45 seconds. Leader very close to that level 16. If he takes the Mumult, he's going to do a hell of a lot of damage. Can they pick off Peach? Peach is isolated right now. So they see him. Small window of opportunity. They see him now. Smite immediately going to try to take the jungler out the pullback. Near perfect CC, but not quite enough. It allows Peach to flash out to safety limit. Patrick were on the way as well. So. Getting jungler flash, definitely a solid start to looking for this third Drake. 25 seconds on the spawn. Peach needs to reset. They're chasing him down, stopped the recalls. Does 1 1 3 throw a sapling in that bush? Leader trying to push in these top waves against Odo Amne, who doesn't have that much magic resist, but still. Thank you, Sion. No. 
Uh, Odawamne is going to run him out of mana. <laughs> just silent. He's just going to out mana him. Ooh, they're going to collapse on him, actually. Does he see the Hextech portals? Leader, Wait a it's second. time for it's time for round two. Is he going to get a third Oscar this game? <laughs> He's out. <laughs> nah, this is not real. Leader's laughing on the camera. What is happening? <laughs> what are we watching? We're is this the world's best game of hide and seek or the world's Weirdest game of League of Legends. It's like, it is Leonardo DiCaprio. It's catch me if you can. <laughs> it's catch me if you can. Going through the whole career, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, Excel are going to grab a tier two here, most likely. Peach waiting over the wall to punish. Leader with a pretty optimal timing coming up on that Banshee to stop any TP behind. Look at the TP. Engage. Finn's going for the long call. They're now looking to force the fight. Patrick, perfect guns for a fight, though. They have to be careful. That's the Maokai ult coming out. It's going to lock up one. Patrick stepping behind limit to make sure that he's safe. Finn on the flank is going to be big. Leader with the stolen ult, but can he get into the back line? Finn, if he gets on top of Patrick, maybe they can make the they fight happen. Do they know he's there? He has no vision. He has the pink ward to work Alt with. Here to comes. get to Fury. Leap in. They're going to try to delete Patrick. They've got so much CC, but it's still not enough. He's got so many chakrams. He's going to start tearing through the team. Abadage and Patrick hand holding as their front line body blocks and protects. Astral is getting torn apart in the exchange. Can they end? Can they end top? 40 seconds on the respawns. Five men strong here, XL. Flashes are up. Bodo Amne can tank the towers. Leader has no wave here. No Baron buff. They need to get this wave down a little bit. The leader is going to die. Leader leaping in, going with the pushback, going golden. This is the game. It's Just over. Just like that. Leader might have won the Oscar, but XL are taking this one home. XL from an 0 3 first week, from two of the worst finishes we have ever seen in winter and spring, have now locked groups in summer. What an incredible turnaround. Top eight secured. Still one more game to go to see how far they can push themselves up the standings, but now they're sitting at four and four. And a bit of a messy game, kind of all over the place. Comes down to just this one team fight on the top side where everything was committed to Patrick, but Patrick managed to get out alive. And um, the rest of XL can just mow down the members of Astralis. Jonkunun leader can do nothing but watch their base die. And special shout out to Abadage. Mental fortitude award. Oh yeah, definitely. That was a tragic laning phase. He was kept his eye down. on the prize, still played with confidence, managed to escape on that bot side fight, and I think that bot side fight felt like the beginning of the end. Yeah. You know, Leader and Finn walking in one at a time. Great moments from Astralis, most certainly, but we saw from the composition, Excel, we're gonna try to make it about front to back. To be honest, didn't even front to back that much. Yeah, I mean, the only real front to back was that fight, really. And yeah. um, they managed to get on the back line, but they got out alive. The Melio doing work. Le Leader had the immovables, but the Melio cleansed straight off. Yeah, I think the Aphelios cleanse came through on the Rennington W, then he just flashed out with the Melio ult. He was fine. He was absolutely fine. And uh, the rest of Exile can do a lot of damage. Of course, Abadaga is playing the Tristana. He got solo killed twice, yes, but managed to recover in the mid game, like we talked about in that bot fight. So yeah. he, wasn't, he was a second threat in those fights when they commit so much onto, onto uh, Patrick. Yeah. And we've talked a lot about how this patch has been difficult for Astralis, and you can see I appreciate that they're still trying to, you know, throw out new ideas, to try new things, to bust out picks like the Pike. Uh, saw it in Spring versus, uh, versus SK, lost, saw it here versus XL, lost. This doesn't feel like the right time. Yeah. You know, you've just got so many reliable champions in the meta right now that a champion as Feast or Famine as Pike. Even to be fair, as Feast or Famine, as, as a Silas and, uh, in the context of this game. I just want to take a second to highlight Patrick. I think it's always been the Patrick show for XL. And yep. I think here we see it again. I think when they're struggling, it looks really tough for him, especially as an AD carry. Your team around you is just kind of, yep. everything falls apart. It's really hard to do anything as an AD carry, but a lot of players rate him very highly. And you can see when his team around him is actually in an even game state, he can pull off the fights well. Yeah, and credit to Limit as well, because I think you saw in spring, it was a bit of struggle for them to get on the same page, but they're looking like a fantastic duo now. And speaking of Limit, he's standing by with trouble. Thank you very much, Dracos. Limit, congratulations on locking the group stage. How does it feel? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> yeah, it feels nice. I mean, I've been only here for like one and a half split now, you know? Mm -hmm. And I know how much uh, Excel has struggled this year. So yeah, it feels nice to actually do well for, uh, for a change. Limit, you joined the team in crisis. Summer 03 into a 3 0 week, into a loss yesterday. What were your expectations when you joined versus the reality that you had to face? Mm, I mean, to be honest, yeah, we didn't have, well, for myself, I didn't have much expectation. You no, know? like we were just, okay, let's take a game, uh, game by game. 
uh, do our best, practice as much as we can, right? We have, after two disaster splits, we kind of have nothing to lose, right? So they just uh, try, practice, and uh, yeah, maybe, I guess it's working off. So Abba and Odo both said kind of like the front to back really works for you guys. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You tried to switch it up yesterday just a little bit on the play style. Didn't work out. Now back to front to back. Is that how Excel is going to be playing from now on? Yeah, I had a little chat with my coaches yesterday. It was not a thing, um, but it's fine. We are over it. What matters is that we won this game. I think we were, we were, we were happy with the champions we got. Um, I got Milio, which is a really fun season 13 champion. Uh, yeah, I'm sure Anecton really loved playing against me. But uh, yeah, uh, we just found kind of a Excel slash even stage champions mm -hmm. that work for us. Games are usually like slower, right? And yeah, it's getting us the wins we need. Now, working into group stage, do you think that this could be a little bit expectable? Teams will read into it, they'll know how to counter front to back. Or do you think that currently, in the current meta, with a really strong AD carry and a super strong front line, it's just not very easy to play against? I mean, it's definitely one of the things we discussed. You know, uh, we definitely don't want to be one-dimensional, right? We still want to explore different things, what works for us. But right now, we're just focused on what's actually going to get us into playoffs. And this, this did. And now we can start to be a bit more creative and with the picks and, and, and see what we can cook. Now, Limit, you talked about playoffs, but we're still going on to group states and two teams will not be making it. Who will be the two teams in your opinion? So the two teams that are not making it? Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess that's an easy one, right? Since they only have one Do you win. mind repeating what the crowd said? Vitality. Okay. I mean, uh, if I had to bet on someone, I feel like BDS also kind of has a hard schedule in front of them, if I remember correctly. So I'll just say Vitality and BDS. All right. Thank you very much, Limit. Congratulations on Loki Group States. We're going on to a very quick break. And when we're back, it's G2 versus Koi. Getting level six first. Can he knock him back? Between the goalposts. Oh, Whoa. he's scoring. Got it. Again, we just rinse and repeat. And now Peach is absolutely done to limit. Gonna try to save the day. A big heal now coming in. The sapling over the wall. It's alive, I think. The body block. Patrick waiting over the wall. Leader overextending. This is it gonna be a big shot to leader. Oh no! A boo does have friends, and they're damn good at League of Legends.